Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter. It's been a while since I last did a review. The last time I did a review was, I think it was, the Hatton's Andrew Barclays when I did a double review on them, when I reviewed two Andrew Barclays in one video. But I'm back with another review and today I'm here to have a look at a brand new release and this is the Dapple B4 which was released only last week, at the end of last week actually. I bought this model during the weekend and at the time of filming this video it has just arrived in the post. Now I've been very much looking forward to this model. Dapple have released several versions of the B4. The livery I've gone for is the model is the product code is 4S-018-002 and this loco is number 90 and this loco is called Khan and it says on the end of the boxer that it's brown but more specifically this livery is the Southampton Docks brown livery now I do like to have livery variety in my collection I've got many different liveries I went for the Southampton Docks brown livery because it's not a livery I have on any other model all the other liveries Dapple have made for this loco I already had on other locos but I didn't have a Southampton Docks brown livery model so that's the reason why I went for this livery which is the one I chose and it's the one I went for now this loco is named like I said this loco is called Khan now there are two B4s in preservation and I have indeed double check that there is indeed two B4s in preservation I made a mistake in one of the reviews I did on the P-Class because I said there were three of them preserved and there's actually four of them so I do apologise for that mistake but there are indeed two B4s in preservation and both B4s in preservation are named because both locos would have worked at Southampton Docks which is where it was only with Southampton Docks where they worked where the locomotives were named because Southampton Docks had a tradition of naming the locomotives but anyway let's get on to the model so we'll take off the cover of the box very nice box design you have a drawing there on the front of the model very nice colour as well on the box it's very nice firm packaging as well this and then inside the box we have an owner's manual I've not seen many of these before I know Batman have started doing manuals like this but usually you just get paper instructions so I didn't expect to see an owner's manual with this model so that was unexpected so it gives you the table of contents at the front there talks to you about the owner's guide so then here's the instructions so talks to you about the coupling and removing the body and there's the diagram of how to do so with instructions of how to do it as well talks to you about fitting a DCC decoder and maintenance as well for the model as well as a couple of warnings in places about the model such as taking care when removing the decoder do not place undue stress on the socket it talks to you about the factory fitted DCC function keys as well this model isn't DCC fitted you also you have the diagram there which is the spare parts list so this is all the parts that make up the model so basically if you lose a part or a part is damaged you can just simply order another part from Hattons and then it talks to you about the warranty as well and some history about the real loco Well, actually no, sorry, my mistake. Um, 
It just talks about the model itself, such as the terms and conditions. I thought that was brief history on it, but no. So my mistake. So that's all that's in the manual. Then we take off the foam cover, like so. And there we have the model in the box. So we'll remove the packaging and put that to one side. And we'll remove the outer plastic sleeve. And we're now free to have a look at the detail parts that we get with the model. Now in this little detail bag we don't get any detail parts as such but what we do get are these two couplings which are very interesting looking couplings because I've never seen couplings like this before. So now all we've got to do now is to finish off the unboxing so we just undo this clip on the packaging then we lift up the top and we then Gently lift the model out of the packaging. And then we can put the packaging to one side and then we'll have a look at the model in detail. Now the first thing I'm going to be talking about, as I always do in these reviews, is talk about the weight of the model. In this case how heavy the model is. There's not much weight in this model, it is quite light. There is some weight in this model, but just not a lot. So this model won't be able to haul any heavy or long trains behind it, which is fine because the B4s were only really designed mainly for shunting work, and they mainly worked in the docks, but they did do some branch line work as well. But they'd only really be shunting and pulling small trains, so they wouldn't really be hauling a massive long rake of coaches or wagons behind them. But that's fine, because I don't really expect this Lauco to be hauling that many. But there is still some weight in this model, so she'll still be able to pull trains, but just not long trains, that is. But like I said, there is some weight in this model, so she'll be able to manage with a good sized train at least, of a few wagons at least, maybe even a couple of couches, but she wouldn't be able to pull a massive long rake of them, but that's totally fine, so that's not really a problem. Moving on to the detail now, which we have sprung buffers, as you can see, which are made of plastic, but they are sprung. I don't have much care for sprung buffers, as I've said before, but if you like your sprung buffers, then they'll keep you happy. But they're there anyway. One thing I do like, in particular, about the buffers is that they have these little holes in the middle of them which is quite nice detail to have on the buffers moving on to the buffer beam we have the locomotive's room number 90 crisply printed on the buffer beam there as well as a separately fitted brake pipe and coupling hook we also have a slim tension lock coupling which is NEM, so you can take that coupling out and change it for another coupling of your choice, should you so wish to do so. On the running board we have separately fitted lamp irons, as you can see, which look very nice. We also have some separately fitted lamp irons on the sides of the smoke box door there. And there is some nice detail on the smart box door. On the smart box door we have separately fitted smart box door darts, a separately fitted lamp iron on top of the smart box door, 
and the smoke box door hinges which have been painted silver just like the smoke box door dots which have also been painted as well we could say they've been painted chrome rather but the paint in the do look really nice on the model we've also got a separately fitted handrail on the model running down across the boiler and up and over the top of this smoke box door and down the other side and that's made out of metal and it's also been painted as well we've got a very nice chimney although there does appear to be a mould line on the chimney as you can see just there not seen a mould line on a chimney before but there is some nice rivet detail though regardless on the bottom of the chimney and you could fit a smoke generator unit in there if you wanted to but I'm not too fussed about the mould line even though it is quite noticeable but there's not much really that can be done about that because that's due to manufacturing on the side of the smoke box we have lots of rivets as you can see on the running board we have sand boxes and they are on both sides of the model and we also have the lubricating pipe in there and the clack valve just there and they're painted and they look really nice on the front of the side tanks we have some separately fitted metal handrails on top of the water tanks we have the tool boxes just here we also have the holders which are these detail parts here and water filler caps which don't open but I don't expect them to open and if they did they'd probably make the model more expensive but they're there and they look quite nice and there's some nice detail on those we have a very nice dome in the middle of the boiler there then behind the dome we have this detail part here which I've got absolutely no idea what this detail part is it might be a valve of some sort I'm not entirely sure but it does look quite nice I mean the detail on that is really good but also we have this detail in here attached to it that's attached onto the top of the boiler there and bends down on top of the water tanks and also you have some pipe work there as well just in the middle just there where the cocktail stick is pointing to so that looks very nice we also have the safety valve and the whistle which look very nice I've turned the model around to this side because this is the side that has the whistle the whistle itself is not a turned brass one but it is painted and it still looks quite nice regardless we have glazing in the cab windows as well as some rivets on top of the cab there and also we have some very nice crispy printed lining on the front there of the cab then of course we have the cab roof which which is not particularly interesting to look at but there is a cab roof on there regardless but there's no detail on it so it's not the most interesting thing to look at moving on to the cab interior now which the interior of the cab has been painted you can't quite see it but I'll get my torch so you can see it better but I'm using this little torch to shine light into the cab interior so you can see the cab interior better and you can see that the cab interior detail in there is painted there's the gauges, the dials, the regulator, the lever, it's all painted and that just looks superb we also have some separately fitted handle, handrails there in the cab door just here and they're painted and the inside of the cab here this part here this trim has also been painted as well and that looks quite nice on the rear of the loco we have rivets just on top where the cab is glazing in the cab windows separately fitted metal and painted handrail locomotive's room number crispy printed and lots of lamp irons we of course also have a NEM tension lock coupling, a slim one as well as well as a 
separately fitted brake pipe and coupling hook and just like on the front of the loco we have plastic sprung buffers we've also got the footsteps which have got some nice rivet detail on them and they look really nice we also have sanding gear as well by the rear drive wheels not forgetting the cylinders which have some very nice rivet detail on them as well now we come on to the outside motion parts now I've turned the model to this side so you can see this better now the side rods are etched parts they're made of metal however the valve gear isn't the slide bars well one of the slide bars which is this one at the top where I'm pointing the cocktail stick to and I'll just zoom in on the camera right now this slide bar here at the top is made of metal it's an etched part however the middle slide bar just there where I'm pointing the cocktail stick to this slide bar here is not made of metal this is made of plastic and it's the same story with the crosshead just here which I believe this is what it's called but it's where the cocktail stick is pointing to this part here which I believe is called the crosshead is also made of plastic now I'm not sure I'm not too sure why those parts have been made out of plastic because to have outside motion parts made out of plastic on a model today is not really good to be honest because it is quite fragile when Batman first started making models some of their models did have plastic valve gear I had a Batman 4M2 one of the old ones once and the plastic valve gear broke meaning that the part of the valve gear inside it the crosshead basically just wouldn't stay in it fell out and prevented the model from running and we tried to repair it and we couldn't and that led to the model being taken out of service and if this part at the top here this slide bar here has been made of metal as well as the side rods then why the slide bar in the middle just there and the crosshead that have been made out of plastic is a bit odd to be honest and it's not very good either so that is a little bit of a disappointment I mean you could if you wanted to paint these parts here but then again we shouldn't really have to do that if I'm honest and like I say the side rods are made of metal they're etched parts the slide bar at the top here is also an etched part but the middle slide bar there and the crosshead here of the valve gear are not etched parts they're made out of plastic however the livery application is stunning a very nice even coat of paint with no errors in it it's a very lovely brown colour and the correct shade as well and also we have some beautiful crisp red lining on the model which the camera's just about picking up it is more clearer to the human eye but the camera's just about managing to pick it up and we have the locomotive's name, Khan, crisply printed in the middle of the side tanks there and I love the style of the font as well and it's the accurate style of font as well moving on to the running performance now of the Dapple P4 and straight out of the box as you can clearly see she's a smooth runner there's no grinding noises or stuttering movements or anything of the sort it runs exactly how it should, straight out of the box.
Okay, now I've turned the lights off inside the shed. There is still some light shining through because I haven't shut the door completely and that door over there is open. Because I didn't want to turn the lights off completely, but I have turned them off otherwise. But I didn't want it to be completely pitch black in here. But I've turned the lights off because this model has something that I want to show you. Something quite special. But look at that, that model has a firebox glow. We'll get a bit of close up of it. Or at least try to. But look at that. That is a really nice touch. We'll get another close up shot of it. I mean, that firebox glow is seriously impressive. But just look at that. I mean, we don't get many Steam Loco models that have a firebox glow. I know Hornby did do it when they first started making double O gauge models. I know the old tender driven 8F had a firebox glow, but in recent years we haven't had locomotives with glowing fireboxes. This model does, and it's a fantastic feature, that is. I mean, obviously, it is hard to focus in on it, especially with a model running around the light, but you can see the firebox glow, as you've just seen. And that feature makes up for the one slide bar and the crosshead of the valve gear being made of plastic. Now we come on to the loaded test run. Now for this one I've decided to do something a bit different because before I put any wagons behind the loco I put some couches behind her and this is just to show you how many couches that she can handle at the maximum. At the most she can handle three. especially up this particular section of the line here as you can see there is some slight struggle there but you can still manage to encounter it but there is a slight gradient on this section but on other sections of the layout such as here some edges then perfectly fine However, if we put more than three couches behind her, she starts to struggle and then stalls. Which you can only just about glimpse down the bottom there. But on the other sections of the layout, such as this section here, she of course can manage them with ease. But then, like I said, on that particular gradient down there, there was a bit of a gradient on that section down there by the tunnel, which is what you're setting there down. And so, to be able to conquer this particular section here without any problems for more than three coaches, it takes two. In this particular case, she requires a banker. But in hindsight, that's not really too much of a problem because I'm not going to really tend to use this loco on passenger work that much. She's going to mainly be doing goods work. So she'll only be making the odd occasion on passenger trains. But so now we come on to the loaded test run of her pulling wagons. There's seven wagons there plus a brake van and she can manage these without any problem at all. In fact she might even be able to pull more wagons than this actually. But she's coping more than fine with these, as you can see with no problems at all. 
And good trains like this is what she's going to be doing more often on my layouts, rather than passenger work. Because she's more accustomed to hauling good trains, if I'm honest. So overall then, the Dapple B4 is a very nice model. She's not perfect, there are still some areas for improvement on her. But it's fair to say that she has redeemed herself for that firebox flicker feature that this model has. And I still recommend that you get one of these models. So overall then, I'm going to rate the DAPL B4 a 9 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the DAPL B4. I hope you've enjoyed watching this review. And I'll see you again next time. But until the next video, subscri subscribe to the channel and check out my other content. I'll see you next time. Ta-ra.